Hello everyone, my name is Matt Kozlowski. I'm the Vice President of Professional Services and Cybersecurity over here at the Winslow Technology Group. I'm really excited today to be joined by Matt Boberg. Uh, his last name is actually a lot easier to say than, uh, than it sounds. So uh, welcome Matt uh, from, uh, from Darktrace representing uh, super awesome advanced AI technology to really help uh, improve folks security uh, really from start to finish. And we'll, we'll talk quite a bit about how AI is, uh, is helping uh, customers uh, detect, uh, respond, and, and even recover from uh, from threats, uh, you know, today. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Winslow Technology Group. So I'll give you a little overview of, uh, of what we do, uh, roles, responsibilities, if you will. I'll introduce uh, Matt. Uh, he is uh, VP of Integrations Architecture at Darktrace, uh, and he is going to discuss how Darktrace Heal uh, and other components of Darktrace uh, use AI to really understand uh, your organization and not just defend, detect, and, and protect uh, against attacks, but really help you even recover from cyber attacks, uh, all from an AI perspective. Um, at the end of that, um, we'll talk a little bit about what a dark trace POV or a trial uh, is. It, it's something that's an awesome value to, to everyone on this call. It costs you nothing, um, give you a ton of valuable insight into what's going on in your environment, uh, and really, uh, really let you try this product out uh, with your own data too. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll try to get to them. Uh, oftentimes, we we start running a little bit low on time, uh, so if we don't get to everyone, we'll follow up uh, with an email afterwards. A little bit about the Winslow Technology Group. Um, so we are headquartered right outside of uh, beautiful Boston, Massachusetts in Waltham. Um, we have offices in New York City, Charlotte, and Washington, D.C. Uh, we cover solutions from the desktop to the data center, including cybersecurity, network, cloud, and, and so on and so forth. Of course, today we're going to talk about uh, really cybersecurity uh, and also like data center and network, right? Uh, Darktrace uh, is, a, is a network, you know, in some ways detection and response tool, though, uh, though now it spans, of course, like email and, and cloud and, and other uh, endpoints too. Um, our, our approach at the Winslow Technology Group is really to identify game-changing technologies, and, and we really believe Darktrace is one of them, um, where, uh, where there's just some really great, uh, you know, technology in play, uh, a very unique technical uh, and, and, you know, high level of customer satisfaction in terms of delivery. Uh, and, and we really believe that, that Darktrace is, uh, is there. Uh, at, at the Winslow Technology Group, we make IT personal uh, by really understanding our customers, uh, really understanding the technology landscape and taking our passion for, for technology, uh, the expertise we have and focusing on outcomes. Um, we are proud to support our customer base. So customer service and satisfaction is number one. We have awesome employees. We have fantastic partners like Darktrace. Uh, we really believe in, in serving our community. Uh, and and uh, of course, our, our investors are, are important too, but we are a customer first uh, organization. We use the NIST cybersecurity framework core to uh, basically be our blueprint for all of the solutions that we uh, bring to market. Um, and of course, that's your identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Uh, we have a variety of solutions and services that uh, that span this. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Darktrace and the AI-based security solutions uh, that Darktrace has actually does kind of span the entire framework here today, and, and Matt and I are going to talk uh, quite a bit about that, uh, actually. Uh, without further ado, uh, Matt, I'd like to introduce uh, you. So this, again, is Matt Boberg from uh, Darktrace. Would you like to uh, talk a little bit about Darktrace and introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for having me, Matt. Um... Thanks for the, uh, the tutorial on the name that, that <laughs> saves me some time. Um, but really happy to be here. Thank you everyone um, for the time. I'm always excited when I get to talk about um, Darktrace, but not just Darktrace, but how it fits in the threat landscape, in technology trends, um, the stuff that's really interesting and kind of affects all of us. So um, really, really happy to be here. Thanks, Matt. You got it, you got it. So, so Matt, tell us a little bit about um, what is AI? Like AI is everywhere now. I mean, you know, Gen AI, of course, has kind of stolen the show. But what is AI foundationally like in the context of cybersecurity? So, like, why, why AI? Yeah, it's a really good question because AI, it seems like, is all anybody in the cybersecurity space is talking about this year. And I think we all know that's largely because of um, generative AI and ChatGPT launching um, a little over a year ago now. Um, but it's really AI is, it does a lot in the security space and it's a double-edged sword, right? We see AI used for good, obviously. We also see it used for bad and, and you're seeing mm -hmm. a little bit of that on your screen right now. Um, yeah. And it's even used in good ways 
that from a security perspective present more risk. Um, so it's a really complicated um, topic right now. Uh, but as you guys can see right here, uh, AI is now starting to be used for um, malicious intent. And what this changes for security practitioners is that attacks are landing more frequently. Um, so we're, we're seeing an increase in the number of attacks, but an increase in their success rate, which is really the crucial thing uh, because that's what takes so much more time and effort from our um, our humans, right, um, in the in the cybersecurity industry. Yeah, I I, I uh, sort of liken this to um, you know if uh, folks are in some sort of like college course, right? There's a lot of controversy around Chat GPT writing papers for uh, for you know students, and like uh, there is no realm where it would be faster for a human to write a paper. Uh, compared to how fast Chat GPT can churn something out, and of course, maybe it's not as good. Uh, certainly, probably isn't as good. But uh, in terms of speed and, and accuracy to topic, I, I feel like it's there. And, and I can only imagine how uh, you know AI is being used uh, maliciously uh, to to attack uh, organizations and really uncover every single vulnerability that a human uh, probably uh, probably couldn't. So. I, I guess Matt, with that, um, what would you say are some more of like the features of AI-centric uh, security solutions that may be different from a traditional uh, EDR, MDR, we'll say like an XDR-centric solution, whether it's a, you know, a service that's being provided or even a SOC that a, a customer is trying to develop or run on their own? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because it's uh, we get away from the doom and gloom and start talking about, all right, what are we going to do about <laughs> yeah. this, right? Um, yep. So... The, the, I'm really happy that AI has become such a hot topic because we've been doing AI at Darktrace for the last 10 plus years. Um, and so it's fantastic that security practitioners like many of you guys on this webinar today are so happy to talk about AI now. Um, but it is not all generative AI, right? That is kind of the, the hot uh, button topic. Um, mm -hmm. But there are within the umbrella of AI and how it's used within cybersecurity, there are very different types um, and they are built for different purposes, right? And so it's really important that as a um, security professional and, and maybe someone who's looking at different solutions for different purposes, it's really important that you map kind of what ultimate use case you have and what you need out of a solution to how that solution is using AI. So you do have um, the approach that kind of looks a bit more at kind of the sort of known attack data, right? Like using um, uh, essentially a ton of different signals across the industry to say, this isn't necessarily a rule or a signature, but this is kind of how an attack looks, right? Okay. And, and that is a great way to, to um, cover a lot of attacks out there, but the way that, that can fall short is that ultimately you're gonna run into sometimes novel threats, you'll run into things like insider threat, things that you can't mm -hmm. necessarily even predict how they'll look exactly. Yeah. Um, with with generative AI, we're also, it's really cool because we're seeing a lot of really strong use cases for it where it's able to say, um, provide the kind of time to understanding for an end user, right, is much shorter. You know, so you go from needing to comb through maybe a lot of disparate systems, dis disparate logs to try to understand what's happening. Um, it seems like generative AI is a really promising way to maybe distill more succinct information um, mm -hmm. in much less time, like you said, right? Lean on the machine. Um, but the way that Darktrace approaches this, and, and we've, again, been doing this for the last 10 years, um, is really unique in that it's basically bringing a clean slate of AI to the customer's data. So it's looking at the customer's environment and saying, not what's, what looks like it could be an attack that we've seen before, um, mm -hmm. but what looks like it's not you, right? Let's understand what you do across mm -hmm. your entire business. And from there, we can discover what's not you and, and therefore alert on and, and stop that from happening. Okay. So it's like uh, at, at like a macro scale, like you're not taking all dark trace customers and comparing anomalies, if you will, between customers. It's more uh, taking a look at the unique uh, environment, almost the snowflake approach. Uh, and understanding what's a little bit different or novel in that particular environment over time. Is is that how you would characterize that? It, it, exactly. And, and the key okay. there is is looking at that particular environment and over time, right? Because mm -hmm. I always, um, trying to explain dark trace, I, I typically end up using the word baseline, but it's not really right because it is a, it's a dynamic baseline. It Correct. shifts yeah. as the organization shifts. So yeah. 
you know, if you if you go through a cloud transformation, for example, Darktrace follows along and learns normal as that shifts. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it does kind of adapt with the uh, the organization, and, and that's where the right. self-learning name comes from, right? Okay, okay. I'll tell you too. Um, something that we see uh, often, and I'm, I'm curious, like what Darktrace's take on this would be. Uh, we have uh, fallen into doing a fair amount of uh, incident response where uh, we'll, we'll actually help folks uh, from, I'll say, like moment zero to like hour 24, and then we'll transition it to, uh, you know, a paneled incident response firm either um, through uh, insurance or whatever. That, that part doesn't matter. But uh, I can tell you, like, especially recently, 10 times out of 10, we're seeing data exfiltration. And it seems like most uh, cybersecurity tools that are out there. I have a really, really difficult time uh, detecting that. And, and unfortunately, I see that as one of the big risk points for especially 2024 and going forward for, for all um, like, you know, CIO, CISOs that, that are out there uh, is exfiltrated data because you, you, can, you can recover from backup. There's a lot of immutable storage now. And, and of course, that, that's you know, critically important. But, uh, but grabbing data and, and threatening to dump it on the web or dumping it on Twitter, however, or X, I'm sorry, <laughs> now, um, it, it just seems like traditional means of protection are really unable to detect that. So um, using AI, uh, tell us a little bit about how Darktrace might be able to detect like anomalous behavior uh, a little bit better, a little bit faster, and maybe even uh, prevent it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Really quickly, I know we're all sick of stats, but um, <laughs> according to IBM's study, the cost of a data breach globally in 2023 averaged almost four and a half million dollars. Um, so it is no joke when it comes to having a data breach. And um, the good news there is that that kind of use case is really dark traces bread and butter, right? And it's it's not even just that data exfiltration, which is sort of the the whammy at the end right but it's the build up to that too yeah so yeah. it's you know we can we can detect data exfil as soon as it happens because it's abnormal right and the intent doesn't right. matter by the way if it's uh you know intentional malicious insider behavior or precursor to files being encrypted right um yep. or if it's someone accidentally using their personal cloud storage instead of their um mm -hmm. you know business cloud storage whatever it is yeah. Yeah. Darktrace can detect that immediately because it's it's not what's normal, not and right. not just for that user, but for you that user's um, similar user group and for the whole environment, right? Yeah. Um, but also building up to that, right? Any any kind of um, attack like ransomware goes through the kill chain, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes that's really quick, sometimes that's really slow, um, and those steps leading up to it are really that's what Darktrace was built to to detect, right? The the people right. that founded Darktrace 10 years ago were essentially sick of doing the cleanup, right? They were saying, we're, we gotta stop patting ourselves <laughs> on the back for cleaning things up quickly. That's great and all, but let's stop it, right? Um, yeah. And and that's really what Darktrace, what our approach allows us to do is, is detect yeah. those little early um, indicators that can, that can help us get ahead of it. Yeah, I'll tell you too, like we're, it's December, we're headed into the, uh, holiday season here, the variety of holidays that are, you know, <laughs> celebrated here, including like, you know, New, New Year's and all, and all that. Uh, this is prime time for cyber attack. Uh, and I feel like any solution that can intelligently get in front of an attack, like like the way you're uh, describing it, uh, feels like of significant value. So I, I would just like throw that out to all of our uh, listeners now, just like keep in mind, like uh, where we're at in terms of uh, time of year, month and, and holidays and uh, this is a uh, prime time for a cyber attacks too. So, yeah, and I'd be remiss if I didn't if I didn't yeah. um, talk a little bit about how um, we approach the holidays, which is um, making sure that we work with our customers, especially those that are are um, recently onboarding Darktrace, that they are fully deployed uh, mm -hmm. to have Darktrace in what we call autonomous mode, which means okay. that you're not only leveraging that self learning AI to detect things, but you're yeah. also leveraging it to respond to and contain anything that's, okay. that's unusual. And that's okay. so important for something like ransomware where you need, yeah. you need to move faster than a human can possibly move. So the idea is uh, Darktrace takes machine speed action to buy the human team time. Um, and yeah. by augmenting the human team, we're then allowing them to assess the situation um, and ultimately come to, to a decision, um, but preventing in that time, anything really catastrophic happening. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you, as you're, um, uh, you know, figuring that out, does 
does the tool and the way it uh, works, does it develop some sort of like a confidence score to determine like how confident am I in this, you know, type of attack? And is that incorporated in uh, automated, I'll say, you know, response or recovery type actions? Yeah, absolutely. So everything that Darktrace thinks or does is completely transparent. And a lot of that is um, scoring for this is um, for on a scale of zero to 100, how unusual this aspect of that activity is. So mm -hmm. a, um, a say, staging to exfil data where someone is moving data around internally, it's a 98% unusual data transfer because of the combination of many things like time of day, the amount of data, the endpoints right. involved, maybe even the uh, file share that it's going to or from. Um, so all of that is communicated within Darktrace, um, which is crucial when you're starting to rely on AI to take actions for you. You really need to be confident um, right. that it's, it's doing the right thing and you need to be able to understand and defend its action if that comes into question at any point, right? You, you need right. to be able to say, you yep. completely understand why it's doing this and, and how, right? Yeah, I, I guess um, I guess tell tell me a little too about um, so uh, one of the beauties of of I believe Darktrace compared to other solutions is is you take a, a multi I, I'll say it's not, perhaps not like multi layered but a multi deployment option approach where you can use APIs, you can use agents, and you have a physical appliance you can deploy on site. I I feel like traditional uh, DLP and then some other solutions that um, can detect, you know, data leak or data loss or or some sort of exfil require agents. Uh, and I'm like, if I were an attacker, I don't know if I would like. I would find the one machine that didn't have the agent installed and use that to stage my attack. So um, I guess like t without getting like too far in the weeds, like technically, can can you talk a little bit about how this is actually deployed and how it's a little bit different from its kind of like network centric. Uh, not not only network centric, you know, because you have APIs, but I'll say like network inclusive uh, <laughs> uh, in, in, yeah. install uh, option or deployment. Yeah. So so Darktrace is incredibly flexible, right? And and because the idea is so simple that we basically we need to get data in its most raw form through mm -hmm. Darktrace's algorithms, right? That's all that we're trying to do when we deploy Darktrace. And so as you mentioned, there are a number of ways to do that, right? There's passive ingestion on the network, basically silently listening, where if you're an attacker, you have no idea that Darktrace is even present, right? Until you get contained right. and then are probably right. frustrated. Um, yep. But that also comes with the possibility for an agent if there are maybe some devices kind of out in a tough to reach corner or remote. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that's always an option, um, but also for things like looking at um, uh, SaaS applications, cloud platforms, um, email, a bunch of different plugins leveraging APIs and things like that so that we can get not kind of disparate alert level data, but raw data back into Darktrace because that's what gives us the understanding of what's normal and therefore what's not um, okay. and, and what should be either looked at or contained. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I guess like shifting gears a little bit, uh, I guess like one of the, one of the things we're seeing more and more is uh, certainly the adoption of the Internet of Things, but um, even more specifically, uh, you know, manufacturers with OT or operational technology um, really concerned about how do we protect uh, that stuff, right? Uh, you can't we can't install agents on uh, some sort of machine that makes stuff. Uh, so I feel like this also goes back to a little bit of dark trace like heritage, perhaps ten years ago, but. Yeah. Um, how, how do you see, like, when it comes to like a business and organization, how is Darktrace helping protect like OT and manufacturing and other things that you um, may not be able to actually even install an agent on? Yeah, that's a great question, and and you're right that it does call back to the early days of Darktrace because our our actually the first Darktrace deployment ever was on the OT side um, back in in the UK, and and that's remained an area of focus for us where we take the exact same. Um, approach that's just looking at what is normal here to detect anything that's abnormal, which by the way on the OT side is is huge, right? Because you really want to be able to enforce normal there. Anything that deviates is is not a good sign. Um, and it's great on the OT side because as you say, it's agentless, right? So there's that um, kind of ease of deployment to make sure that Darktrace can still get the visibility it needs without um, 
the impossibility of installing an agent everywhere right and without any disruption um yeah. or even um without kind of introducing any risk either because mm -hmm. when you look at security solutions um you know you're often um kind of relying on sending data to the cloud or having it at least connect back to get updates for rules and signatures and, and things like that whereas um, with Darktrace, you can, on, especially on the OT side, many of our customers too should basically just drop Darktrace into their OT environment and keep it completely air-gapped. Um, okay. And because it's learning on the customer's data, there's no need for it to connect right. to the outside world, right? It's yeah. a completely yeah. closed system. Um, and, and yeah, o OT is a really strong use case for us. I, I feel like if I were an attacker uh, and I knew it was a manufacturer, like I don't even think I'd maybe bother with file servers and Active Directory and all that, I, I feel like if I were going to hold something hostage or hold something for ransom, I would like go right for the OT. I mean, that's what's generating the money. And, and when those you know machines are offline, even for minutes, never mind like a day or two, uh, the company is going to lose so much money that they will quickly cough up money for a ransom, I believe. So like, I, I feel like this is probably an underpenetrated perhaps area of uh, you know, maybe even this this type of technology. If, if I were, you know, OT manufacturing, like I certainly would uh, be considering this for sure. <laughs> yeah, and 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 what's nice is that, you know, it, it of course depends on use cases and and what the customer is looking for. Um, mm -hmm. But oftentimes, many of our OT customers also use Darktrace on the IT side because a sure. lot of you know you think about what's the main kind of threat vector into your OT, and it's it's going to be users, right? So it's yeah. it's really um, you yeah. know, whether that's on the IT side or if they're dedicated more on the OT side, right. um, it really helps when you have a platform that can understand what's happening everywhere right. um, so that you're protected even kind of upstream, if you think about it that way. I guess like email, right, probably comes to mind on the IT side as one of the most like dangerous entry points, if you will. And you're not like, yeah. uh, although the endpoint has like, you know, some fancy EDR on it, it's not like you're installing EDR like directly into like Outlook or email or Google Word, whatever you're using for email. So so I guess from like an email perspective, tell us a little bit about Darktrace email. And I understand like that's, um, you know, just a not not new, but a, a growing, rapidly growing space for, for Darktrace is, is using um, API integration with email to detect anomalous behavior and um, apply AI cybersecurity to email as well. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you're you're right that um, oftentimes Darktrace is is known for the network side, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what many people don't know is that almost 50% of our customers have Darktrace for email. Um, oh wow! Email, okay. I think, has has flown really under the radar as as a really nice um, kind of cornerstone uh, offering uh, within our platform, and mm -hmm. it takes that same approach where it's looking at raw data, so instead of network packets or uh, user activity in in you know cloud workspaces or whatever, it's looking at the email data, right? And so it's right. pulling that in right. uh, directly from the um, from the email provider and churning all of that information, looking for what's normal, what's abnormal. It understands um, the uh, inboxes of everyone in the organization and their relationships, not only to each other but also to external organizations. Mm -hmm. um, so you know they. It, uh, Darktrace email deployed internally here understands that uh, you and I and, and Darktrace and WTG have interfaced before, and these are the types right. of ways that we normally interface. But it'd be really unusual if you sent me a link to a cloud storage platform that neither of us has sent each other before, right? right. So even right. though you may be a trusted uh, sender, if you were, say, compromised, Right. You need to be ready for that, right? So yep. supply chain yep. attacks, things of that nature. Um, email is really good at spotting. And like you said, it's probably the single biggest attack vector for any organization. Um, so email is is a really popular product among our customers. And it's one that actually many customers start off with, really, to get kind of used to that dark trace approach. It's incredibly easy to um, flip on um, and kind of understand how dark trace can help protect you at the inbox, um, mm -hmm. and then many of them pretty quickly transition to network, cloud, endpoint, whatever it is as well, um, because okay. as you kind of increase your dark trace coverage, that's more data for dark trace, right? And so yeah. what it what that does is it strengthens its understanding of what's normal. So with email and network, you can share information. A link that was just 
but that it just arrived in your inbox. Yeah, maybe it's really unusual for you to get that. You've never gone to that link, but someone else in your organization has, and it's pretty frequent. So okay. maybe we can allow that one through this time. Um, but if you click it and we notice some unusual behavior on the network, maybe we want to go back and remove that link from anyone else's inbox yeah. that also right, receives. Right. So there are some really strong use cases for interplay between all of the areas that you see on the screen here. Okay. And then uh, integration is super easy too, right? You don't have to do email gateways or any kind of like rules or anything. Uh, like I think for M365, you guys just use like the graph API and just it's like an API to API connection. It's pretty simple. Yep. Uh, API or journal link. It's, it's flexible. Um, yeah. And in, in any case, it, it is really basically just setting up those permissions effectively. Yeah. Cool. Really straightforward stuff. Um, so we've talked a whole bunch about uh, I'll say like protective technology, whether it's, you know, general, you know, network, OT, obviously we just talked quite a bit about email. Um, I think one of the relatively newer offerings um, is kind of like not just your ability to uh, detect something, uh, take action and contain uh, that incident, but actually help people uh, in recovery. So uh, post containment and, and understanding and helping um, actually kind of like recover uh, an environment. So um, I know we have a, kind of like have a couple minutes left, and I want to save time for a couple questions, anyways. But could you tell us a little bit about um, Dark Trace Heal and, and how this uh, continues? A kind of a, I'll say like uh, this is that shift, <laughs> uh, if you will, more to the right across the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, more into not just like respond in terms of containment, but um, you know respond in recovery and, and helping uh, admins quickly get their environment back uh, back online. Yeah, and, and so Heal is the uh, kind of latest solution that we have launched at Darktrace. We launched it earlier this summer. Um, and it operates essentially on that same approach, right? That Darktrace's understanding of the environment in which it's deployed. Um, but what Heal does is it takes that knowledge and it kind of fully enables an organization to use Darktrace from a kind of 360 degree view for incident preparation incident response and incident management. And so what you see on the screen here, can those three columns can roughly map there. And on the, on the far left, what Heal does is can continuously help customers um, improve their readiness across their people, processes, and technologies. So that ahead of an incident even occurring, you're able to drive value and know that you are improving not just your say technology's readiness, everything's working as it should be, you know that your backups are ready, uh, you know that um, you have proper access and visibility into these other systems that you'll need right. should an incident right. occur. Um, right. But it can even run um, security teams through a detailed um, incident simulation, which is entirely in dark trace an actual incident, incident that we've seen occur, superimpose it onto that environment, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you can take you know, go from basically your high level conceptual tabletops down to a, this device, this user is making this connection, this activity, seeing an incident evolve in your environment at the time that a real incident would, um, at the okay. time scale, I should say. Okay. And you get to interact with that and put yourself through the motions. Um, okay. So there are a huge number of use cases for our customers there. Um, it's been fun kind of seeing them develop new use cases and coming back to us, kind of working on those. Um, and during well, I think that's that's like very cool what you just said there because uh you know we've been doing tabletops like I feel like forever like even before cybersecurity was a thing like whether it was disaster recovery or uh you know planning for you know heavy you know demand workload type stuff like like we we have been doing it forever but uh they've always quite literally been tabletop where we just like kind of invent a scenario uh maybe it's optimistic maybe it's not uh, and right. walk through what we would do, but this is actually like superimposing like data uh, in an actual incident on someone's technology and like seeing what happens. So it's like it's almost a way of like simulating an attack, uh, you know, without yeah. actually having an attack. Would that be? A yeah. So you're you're, you're basically putting yourselves through the motion of this attack is happening in our environment, although it's just in dark trace. Uh, yeah. Not real. Yeah. So how do we handle this? And here's how. Dark Trace Heal helps us through it, but also mm -hmm. it puts us through the motions where we have to actually go through each task that Dark right. Trace Heal is, is putting forward and um, in some cases automating, in some cases guiding you through. 
Right. Uh, and so you uncover those gaps in process or gaps uh -huh. in, in experience, right? Um, and every time we, we kind of work with the customer on this, we do some workshops with customers as well. We uncover, you know, all these little things that you just, you would never find when you're, um, you know, kind of going through the checkbox exercise of, oh right. yeah, we know how to do that. Let's move on. Great. Yeah. Um, it's so it's like, a lot it's, from it. yeah, I feel like it's like if firefighters, uh, never actually fought like the fake fires and I don't mean fake, like they're like a little tiny campfire. I mean, like, like firefighters go through like real, like training, like putting out real fires. They light like real buildings and trains and stuff like that on fire and then test it. But like, I do feel like cybersecurity, especially like incident response, like a lot of it is done uh, in thought and on paper. And it's, it's very cool that you're actually providing an avenue to do this in technology so people can get comfortable with what an incident might look like. Uh, how they might respond and just you know better preparing and, and readying themselves for uh for an attack because uh, an attack's going to happen i mean let, let's be honest like uh it could be small it could be large but uh everyone's everyone's a target and everyone's going to have some form of an attack it's just it's kind of like the nature of the beast now. yeah it, it, exactly and, and when that attack does occur you'll be more ready um but right. also in classic dark trace fashion keel does use ai to basically produce bespoke playbooks that are put together piece by piece for that particular right. incident. So it takes its understanding of you, it takes industry best practice, and instead of the you know, security practitioner sitting in between those two and saying, oh man, mm -hmm. I have to map this high level NIST approach to this device with this mm -hmm. incident, um, it kind of bridges that gap um, right. using right. AI. And, and so that's, that's a really kind of the core value of, of the incident response aspect. And then, yep. um, automated reporting, um, integrations to save time, um, uh, as far as cross team collaboration, loads yeah. of, um, really valuable stuff in there too. Cool. Hey, this is, uh, this is awesome. I feel like, um, I know we're kind of coming up on time here. We have a couple questions. Um, uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll hit those, but before we hit the few questions here, I'll, I'll just say if, um, if we don't get to your question, like, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, in advance, thanks for, uh, thanks for understanding. We'll, we'll get back to you, uh, an email. There's the info info at Winslow TG or you can do webinars at Winslow TG to uh to get us uh, and ask the questions um you know if you have any after uh, or if we don't get to the question you have in the webinar we'll uh, we'll follow up um uh, really really quickly uh Matt could you uh could you quickly describe like what the no cost dark trace proof of value is so uh this is this is available to all you know folks who who attended the webinar today it's an awesome way at no cost no obligation to like not only Try dark trace in your environment, but who knows? You might have something brewing that you don't even know about uh, that that dark trace could detect. So, do you mind just talking? Yeah, to me? Just I, like, absolutely. P POV at, at dark trace really really simple. Um, we get you up and running. Um, we can you know isolate any individual coverage area if that's desirable, like email network. Mm -hmm. We can do cloud network email all together. Um, so it's really flexible as far as process is concerned for the customer to get what they need to see out of it. And okay. we kind of walk you through step by step. Here's how you sort of leverage dark traces general approach. Here's how right. you um, you know make sure that you're getting the most out of um, dark trace respond for containment yeah. and things like that. Um, so it's a really nice kind of um, really personal delivery of a of a POV that makes sure that the customer sees exactly what they're they're setting out to see. Okay. Good. I, I would realistically like anyone who's attended this, like if you're interested in this, I'd just like take us up on the offer. Like I said, it's it is no cost, no obligation. If even if you want to just try the email one, it is like a really simple uh API connection to get you started it is not a heavy lift to uh to get these going. So um cool. Uh we, we do have a, a few questions actually. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll start at the top. Um, actually this one, uh, I'm sure you'll, <laughs> you'll be ready for because, uh, we, we've had this asked before too. So, um, the gist of it is, uh, if you bring dark trace into an environment that is, uh, compromised, but like no one knew it was compromised at the time, um, will it actually learn the compromised behavior as normal, uh, or will it actually like alert and start detecting like right away? So I guess, I guess like what happens if you bring dark trace into uh, a compromise environment, maybe even during a, a, a POV, for example. Yeah, and, and this does happen sometimes, right? Like we don't want that to be the case ever, but it, right. it does <laughs> sometimes happen. And this is a question that we get all the time. So um, the beauty of it is that Darktrace doesn't look at what's normal from a single perspective, right? So if you've got 
a device that's compromised or even several, many devices that are compromised, Darktrace is looking at your entire organization. Um, sometimes that's the whole network, sometimes that's network and email even, right, or cloud. Um, so because it's looking at the entire organization and it's grouping peer groups and things like that, um, there isn't really a way for behavior like that to hide. Um, okay. So it is one of those things that we discover really quickly. And should that happen in a proof of value, um, we, we hope it doesn't, but we'll, we'll see that pretty quickly and, and let you know. We're not going to kind of wait that one week of, uh, right. you know, yeah. like baselining <laughs> and display it in the meeting. Like that's a, that's a call. Yeah. Immediately. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, next one here. Uh, you sort of touched on this when we were talking about uh, OT. Um, in terms of like deployment options, is this uh, cloud only or is there like a complete on-prem air gap version uh, of, of this for folks to deploy as well? Completely flexible. So we have okay. customers that are, you know, complete hardware only air gap it. Um, we have customers that are just um, basically everything uh, almost like a SaaS service where dark trace is in the cloud we do email csp and some SaaS apps for them they've got no on-prem infrastructure um, and then everywhere in between too so really flexible um, and you know we've got a, a whole team who are uh, seasoned at kind of designing the best the best approach yeah cool um we are uh not up at time but over time <laughs> so uh thanks for everyone for for hanging out sorry we went over by a couple minutes uh, Matt, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. I really, uh, really appreciate it. Any uh, final thoughts before we uh, shut down uh, for the day? I'm just very happy to be here. Thank you so much for the time. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, and we'll talk soon, I hope. Awesome. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye now.